Hi, welcome to this video presentation by Unknown India YouTube channel. The Indian civilization is fascinating with several unique aspects. We all think that we have a very good understanding of it, but there are several misconceptions about the Indian civilization, mainly due to ignorance, but sometimes also due to prejudice. In part one of the video, we shall address misconceptions numbers one to five, and in the part two to follow, we shall address misconceptions numbers six to ten. In this video, we will address and remove these misconceptions based on authentic information derived from solid evidence based on official documented archaeological excavation reports of the Archaeological Survey of India and research papers and articles by eminent persons published in both international and Indian journals of repute. All the references to these and other resources used in this video are given in the description below. Please check them out. If you like this video, please click the like button, share it with your contacts, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos and other announcements. Thanks. Please view it on a laptop or desktop or tablet for better video quality and use a headphone, earphone or earbuds for better audio quality. The very first misconception Indus Valley Civilization is the mother of all Indian civilizations. Nothing can be farther from truth. Both Indian and foreign historians have propagated this theory that all civilizations in different parts of India stem from a single source, namely the Indus Valley Civilization. This is totally misconceived. We will tell you why. It so happened that the early archaeological excavations by the Archaeological Survey of India during the British rule and the immediately post-independence times were all done only in sites situated on the banks of river Indus. So people called it the Indus Valley Civilization. One of the early sites was Harappa, so it was also called the Harappan Civilization. But civilizations have also arisen and thrived independently and simultaneously on the banks of the other major rivers of India, such as the Estuile Saraswati, and the present Ganges, Godavari, Narmada, Mahanadi, Kaveri, Purnai or Tamravarni, etc. This has been proved by archaeological excavations done at hundreds of sites on the banks of these rivers. Some of these are covered in separate videos of this channel referred in the description below. Other videos can also be found in other YouTube channels dealing with the history and heritage of India. Misconception number two, Mehargar in Baluchistan is the oldest South Asian civilizational site. Mehargar is a Neolithic archaeological site located in Baluchistan near the Bolan Pass to the west of River Indus. It was discovered in 1974 by the French archaeological mission led by the French archaeologist Jean-François Jarish and his wife. Mehargar was excavated continuously between 1974 and 1986 and again from 1997 to 2000. It was believed till very recently that Mehargar, which is dated as early as 6400 to 7000 BCE, was the oldest civilizational site in South Asia. But this was before the discovery of Birana. The archaeological site of Birana or Birdana as the locals call the place is located in Fatehabad district of the North Indian state of Haryana of India. It is 258 kilometers northwest of New Delhi on the National Highway. Excavations were carried out under the supervision of Mr. L. S. Rao, Superintending Archaeologist of the Archaeological Survey of India from 2003 to 2006. Excavated objects were C-14 radiocarbon dated at the Birbal Sani Institute of Paleobotany Lucknow. They have led to path-breaking findings, namely 1. Datings of objects found at different levels of excavation site indicate a continuous occupation of the Birdana site right from pre-Harappan to late mature Harappan civilizations. Number 2. 
Remains of pottery found in the earliest levels of Birdana yielded a carbon dating of 7570 to 6200 BCE, older than the previously held belief that Mehargarh in Baluchistan with dating of 6400 to 7000 BCE was the oldest site. Thus, Birdana is the oldest pre-Harappan civilizational site found so far in the world. Misconception number 3 River Saraswati is only a mythological river it never existed totally unfounded prejudice of historians and indologists who are either unaware of or who pretend to be unaware of several scientific findings that have conclusively proved the existence of river Saraswati in the past I know there is enough proof by way of satellite images both of the landsat of USA in the 1970s and later of ISRO of India as also spot satellites of France and ERSS satellites of European Union of the course of a dried up river bed of a river far mightier in terms of length width and flow than perhaps even the Brahmaputra that originated in the lower shivalik ranges of the Himalayas running through Punjab Haryana western Rajasthan into Bawalpur district in Pakistan and then running down straight into the Kutch part of Gujarat before draining into the Arabian Sea. This was River Saraswati, indicated in the cyan colored line which once had Yamuna and Satlaj as tributaries. It is described as a mighty river flowing from the mountain, gushing powerfully along its long course before going into the sea. In Mandalas 1 to 4 of the Rig Veda, There are graphic details of the release of huge water volumes from serpentine glaciers which made the river swell and flow with the blessings of Lord Indra. The river Saraswati is supposed to have dried out because of various reasons including stoppage of glacial water feed, weakening of monsoon, etc. by 1900 BCE and part of its dried out course is identified by geologists with the erstwhile Gagar Hakra river system comprising Gagar in India and Hakra in Pakistan misconception number 4 aryans invaded india and gave it its culture and civilization according to this theory sanskrit speaking and horse riding nomads from a region somewhere from eastern europe to central asia called the aryans invaded the indian subcontinent around 1500 bce and destroyed the prevailing civilization with their superior weapons and gave the indians the present civilization and culture they are also credited with the authorship of the vedas this theory was propagated in the 19th century by western indologists led by max muller who found this a convenient way to explain the linguistic linkages between sanskrit and western languages such as greek latin german french etc but it later became a convenient tool for the british colonizers to flaunt the superiority of their race and civilization justify their brutal colonization and create divisions among indians furthering their notorious divide and rule policy This theory has been debunked several decades ago in the 19th and early 20th centuries itself by towering personalities like Swami Vivekananda who has asserted that there is not one word in our scriptures that is such as Rigveda not one to prove that the Aryan ever came from anywhere outside India true the Rigveda has no mention of invasion or migration from outside Sri Aurobindo who said it's that is Rigveda's rich spiritual symbolism and the complexity of its Vedic Sanskrit language are quite incompatible with the cultural status of the supposed Aryan nomads The theory has also been debunked in recent times by a host of modern day experts such as Michel Danino the French born professor of IIT Gandhinagar Srikanth Telagiri an expert in vedic history and indologist 
Major General G.D. Bakshi, retired army officer who is an expert in Indian heritage. Dr. Shiv Sastri, linguist and philologist. Abhijit Chowda, scientist and researcher and a host of others. We will now summarize their reasoning for completely rejecting the Aryan invasion theory. 1. There is no archaeological evidence of any invasion which resulted in mass murders. No mass pile of weapons or skeletons have been found in any of the hundreds of Saraswati Sindhu civilizational sites excavated so far. 2. There is absolutely no evidence of disruption by a new civilization or man-made destruction or structures. On the other hand, excavations at all sites reveal overwhelming evidence of continuity of the Saraswati Sindhu civilization, both in technical areas such as construction, metallurgy, water management, etc., as well as cultural areas right up to the present day. All structures in an excavation sites are well preserved. You can find details of this in our videos referenced in the description below. 3. The claim that Aryans introduced the horse, chariot, metals like iron, etc. to India is ridiculous as there is plenty of archaeological evidence in Saraswati Sindhu civilizational sites that the native Indians were using these long before the supposed arrival of Aryans. Details of this are also referenced below in the description. 4. Earlier in this video, we saw that the Rigveda refers to Saraswati as a mighty roaring river in full flow. If the Rigveda was written by the invading Aryans after 1500 BCE, this kind of description was not possible as the river had completely dried up by 1900 BCE, according to scientific hydrological studies of the dried up riverbed. 5. Recent anthropological and genetic studies have revealed a basic gene of native population in Northwest India, which is many thousands of years older than its mutants found in regions outside India, especially in Europe and Central Asia. So actually there are pointers to an out of India migration according to Telegiri. We have provided links to the books, articles and videos presented by these modern experts below in the description. But despite such overwhelming evidence against the Aryan invasion theory, its proponents and supporters continue to publish papers in its support, but they refuse to engage in any meaningful debate with experts who have debunked it with sound reasoning. Also, most of the Indian history textbooks still peddle this false theory. We do hope that this is rectified soon by the government of India. Misconception number 5 India's Iron Age started in the northern region around 1900 BCE. Use of iron to make farming tools and implements was an important development for most civilizations to transition from hunting and gathering to farming because iron tools and implements could quickly convert forests into farming lands. It also marks the beginnings of a very important transition from a nomadic tribal culture moving from place to place as hunter-gatherers to an agrarian society that started living in permanent habitats on plain grounds rather than in caves and rock shelters and also started domesticating cattle and other animals. Based on investigations in sites at iron smelting Malhar, located in the iron-rich mineral zone of Midganga Valley, in the heartland of India near Varanasi, it was thought that the Iron Age of India started in the northern region around 1900 to 2000 BCE. However, during excavations at Mailadam Parai, a small hamlet located at the foothill about 3 kilometers west of Togarapalli village in Bargur Taluk of Krishnagiri district of Tamil Nadu, in 2021, by the Tamil Nadu Archaeological Department with guidance of external experts, iron objects such as small knives, swords, axes, arrowheads, etc. were found. These were sent to the reputed Beta Analytics Laboratories in Miami, Florida, USA for carrying out radiocarbon dating with accelerator mass spectrograph, which is the most reliable method of dating. The mid-range calibrated dating for the iron samples was found to be 
2172 BCE. What does this mean? Yes, iron was first introduced and used in India in Tamil Nadu in the year 2172 BCE or before, that is over 4200 years ago. In other words, iron age started as early as 4200 years ago in Tamil Nadu, India. Please check out our other videos in the full playlist and also subscribe to our channel by clicking the respective links. Thank you.